Today, I'll be talking about my Speakers League journey and my journey through Speakers League. Okay, so first, how I joined. It's not very inspiring how I joined. My parents made me. Duh. Like, I bet you half of you, your parents made me join, and then you're like, well, I can't disagree, so why not just join? Like, okay, so at first, I can remember my first meeting very clearly. It was virtual, and I think I was with Mr. Morgan, and this was me. I'm just like, and this was my getting to know you speech, and it was approximately two years ago. And I don't even have any professional uh, shirt. I literally just have like a Minecraft shirt on. And I was feeling really nervous because <coughs> I've never done a speech before to people that I don't know. And it was really new to me. But over time I found out that Speakers League, well this was Junior Speakers League, was actually not that bad. So, in the class, I actually, when Mr. Morgan was grabbing materials and stuff, I was just chatting with this kid, uh, and we both like Minecraft, and I met a new friend there, so I think the thing we could learn from that is that speech can also bring people together, and you could meet some interesting friends there. So, after about one year, I turned from Junior Speakers League to Normal Speakers League. <laughs> Yay! And to be honest, when I joined Normal Speakers League, I think I was still virtual for the first once or two times. But overall, I think the transition was pretty smooth. And I got a real nice bonus. You get real ribbons, not digital ribbons that you have to use your imagination to think of. <laughs> so, <laughs> overall, I think the Speakers League, the transition from Junior Speakers League to Speakers League wasn't all that huge. Like, really, it was just new people and a new teacher. But other than that, I think it was pretty nice. Like, the jobs, I guess, were a little harder, but I think, to me, that was probably the smoothest transition I've ever had. So now the most challenging part for me back then was probably getting eligibility for the impromptus, because, as Kevin might remember, one, 100% of the time, I would get to the end of the yellow signal, and then I'd just be like, thank you, my speech is done, bye-bye. And it was, I honestly didn't really care, but now I'm basically winning it 85% of the time, and I think I have improved a lot over the years, over two years of a span, and I think overall that was the most challenging part of my speakers league <coughs> and I think overall my speech methods changed a lot. Use when before I joined speakers league when I was trying to convince someone to give me something I'd be like give me that now. Now, I want it now. But now I could reason with them, more or less. Like, I guess saying, give me that now nicer is reasoning with people. <laughs> but overall, I think my speech has become smoother. And I've even won one, two, three Chinese speech competitions. It was like telling a Chinese folk tale or something like that. I won three first place. And overall, I think even through different languages, my speech ha has improved very thoroughly. As, as I just said, I've won three Chinese 
speech, which is definitely not what I'm doing right now. And overall, I think I would pretty, I would pretty much recommend anybody who has speech issues to join this club because I think it's overall pretty fun and allows you to have a good use of your spare time to learn some speaking skills. So that is my Speakers League journey. Thank you. My favorite part of this session was the first day to go to do the volleyball.